Welcome to Drawing Wild Washington. I'm your host, Judd Dunkerley, Associate Artist with the Burt Museum at the University of Washington in Seattle. In this program, we're going to be drawing life from the temperate rainforest. This is mostly on the Olympic Peninsula and the west side of the Cascades. These are forests that get over 55 inches of rain a year, and they're different from the tropical rainforests in the Amazon because they're not so tropical. The weather's cooler. In this episode, we're going to be drawing a mammal, the elk, a bird, Stellar's jay, and an invertebrate, the Pacific banana slug. And if you have not watched the Drawing Wild Washington intro program yet, go back and do that to get a little more background information about what we're doing, how we're doing it, and why we're doing it. All right, so let's dive right in. The elk, actually the largest member of the deer family. These weigh up to 1,200 pounds. And I'm going to start by drawing their bodies. Just a big, long rectangle that's about three times as wide as it is tall. So if that helps you to draw squares, then you can. Draw three squares like that. Okay, and that's going to be the length versus the height of your body. Now there's some bumps and bulges that come off these squares, so I'm going to draw one right here for the shoulder and for the butt it's going to kind of go off like that and then the belly is going to kind of come down between them so if you could kind of see there's sort of a flow going like that check that out and then the neck's going to come bulging like that so we start with a rectangle and then we put these bulges here and you can you can do this wavy line it shows the flow of the body so it goes up down the saddle and then back down like that okay all right so um the front legs are just skinny rectangles about a third of the way back so i'm just going to draw some skinny legs down like that okay and usually honestly i never see the feet of these things they're in the they're buried in the grass almost every photograph i've seen so uh, i just draw the legs down like that and then the back legs have a cool angle to them I usually draw a, uh, an oval forward and then kind of a short rectangle backwards and then a longer rectangle forward, okay, like that. And then again, they'll disappear into the grass, okay? And then I'll draw another one a little bit less angled like that. So rectangle, rectangle, and then they connect. And the back legs are right in line with the butt, so they're not really uh, forward at all, okay? Now, for the head. I am going to draw right up here on the top. I'm going to draw a triangle with a flat bottom right off the front end of the neck, okay, right on top of this front uh, square that we drew for the body. And remember, everything we're drawing right now should be really, really lightly drawn. I'll square off the tip of the triangle, and I'll flatten off the top, and this will be the head of the elk, just like that. All right, um, the antlers, they go from the front edge to halfway back like this. And I'm gonna get, they're so big, they're gonna go up into the name here. I'm gonna move this down a little bit. So the antlers go way up like that. They're curved lines. And then this one's gonna kind of curve up like that. Okay, and try to get the size right. Now the patterns are always a little bit different. So there's different curves that come off of here and they're kind of like tree branches. So they're never gonna get bigger. They just get smaller as they go up. And then there's always a couple towards the base that sort of jut forward like that, okay? Take a look at the photographs. You'll see a lot of different shapes of elk antlers. So I always just try to do some curves and I always think of tree branches when I'm doing it. Okay, a couple more things. The eye is in the top center of the head. So right here, it's a small sort of rectangle. The nose is right here towards the end. I never really see the mouth. It's there, but it's kind of just right down on the bottom like this. So you can just draw another second line there. And then the ear is just kind of a little pointy uh, oval right behind the antler. Okay, and the other ear comes off over here in front of the other antler. And there you go. I think I might have even drawn my eye a little bit too big. 
So as I start to uh, draw in the basic details here, uh, I'm going to give the neck a little bit more heft. Uh, there's a little bit more of a bushy, dark fur kind of along the neck. So if you want to do some texture like this, and do a little bit of shading, the neck area and the belly area are a little bit darker. All right, another name for these animals is wapiti, which was uh, what they were called for a long time before they were Latinized into Cervus canadensis, or the great elk. Uh, other things you might want to know about the elk is that the males grow the antlers. Every single year they grow a new pair of antlers, and they can be up to four feet long. And I said this is the largest species in the deer family. They can weigh up to 1,200 pounds, over 1,000 pounds. They live for most of the year in single sex groups. So the males live with each other and the females live with each other. And then they get together in the fall to mate. And it's a time known as the rut. And if you've ever been around elk during the rut, they congregate in these large groups and they make these noises. And I'll never forget I was in the Olympic Peninsula on a little bit of a hike and I heard what I thought was a whale coming up the valley. And I knew it couldn't be a whale, but I didn't know what it was until I saw these elk and they were making these bugling, trumpeting whale noises. Pretty spectacular. So there you go. That is my info on the elk. All right, so we're gonna move on next to our bird. This is gonna be Stellar's Jay. Steller's J was named after Jörg Wilhelm Steller, as a German zoologist who first recorded them in 1841. And I'm going to start with my light colored pencil. For the body, I'm going to draw a half circle that's a little bit at, a, at an angle, almost like a 45 degree angle like that. So you draw a, an angled line and then you draw a half circle like that. Okay. Uh, they're going to draw some triangles for wings that stick off the back like that. So they're kind of like yay big, okay? And then for the tail is a rectangle about as long as the body that comes off the back end here at a slightly sharper angle than I drew the top of the body, okay? And these things, the birds themselves are about a foot long. Uh, the head I'm gonna go ahead and draw is a uh, a combination of a square right off the tip and then a big tall triangle like that about as tall as the square if not even taller okay and this is the head and then this is a crest of feathers that stick up and right where they come together there's another triangle a little bit smaller facing forward and then the eye is right in the middle of this so I'll draw a little circle right in the middle of this head okay and the last thing to really sketch out are the legs. They come right under the tail. And actually, instead of the legs themselves, I'm going to draw the space between the legs as a little triangle that lines up, push this up a little bit, lines up with the tail. Okay. And then I'll draw the legs, which are just little skinny rectangles. Uh, the toes are kind of blobby, and they end with these hooked, curved talon type things. And there's toes that go forward, and there's toes that go backwards. And a lot of times you'll see these jays are perching on a stick or a branch like that. And as long as you just draw one set of toes going forward and one toe going backwards, you're probably not going to see all the toes. So I put them in like that. And then the last thing I'll denote is uh, on the body, right about here, just going straight back is a line that divides the coloration. So above this is, is a black and gray color, and below it is a blue color. And then the feathers have some textures right here to show that. And then they actually have a striped pattern that goes like that here, and then on the tail as well. Okay, so I'll start with my darker pencil, coloring in. And when I come up here to this crest, I'll do a little bit of a texture to show the fringe. And then it kind of curls down like that. Uh, when I draw the eye, I always try to leave a little bitty bright spot in there to make it look shiny. Here's the beak coming forward. And then I come down here and around the belly. 
A little bit about these birds. They eat pretty much anything. They're called omnivores. And they're really smart. A lot of times they'll hide seeds in the forest undergrowth, under leaves and things like that. They'll dig little holes. And they're able to remember where they put each and every seed almost completely from memory, which is something I would have a really hard time doing. Draw the wings in here. The other thing they can do, which is kind of cool, is they can imitate the calls of other birds. So if you're in the forest and you hear what you think is a robin, it might not be. It might be one of these. I'm going to darken in the head part where it's black. You can see the coloration a little bit. Smudge it in here and then put some stripes down the wings and then a little bit of just wing feather texture like that. And you can draw in a little bit more shaggy feather texture and color this thing in blue if you want to. All right, so that is Stellar's J, kind of a cool little bird. You see those in the woods in the temperate rainforest. And last but not least, the Pacific banana slug, Areolimax columbianus. This is the second largest species of slug in the world. They are almost 10 inches long. There's a longer one in Europe, uh, but you know, we don't talk about that. And the body is just going to be a long oval, okay, really long oval. So you can just kind of draw, and these things, there's no specific length because they're squishy. So I'm just going to draw one big long oval like that. And then about halfway down the oval, I'm going to draw another oval along the top, right here. And this is called the mantle. And this is a curious part of the slug. It's left over from when these used to be snails evolutionarily. Uh, it's called vestigial, and it's where the snail shell used to grow. And with slugs, they don't grow snail uh, shells any longer, but they still have these mantle pads. It's kind of like your appendix. Okay, and it's got a hole in it about three quarters of the way back. So that's about halfway, about right there. This is called the pneumostome. Look it up. And it's a pore. It's always on the right side, and it leads to their single lung. It's like an air hole. Okay? Pretty cool. Then we've got two skinny sets of sets of skinny triangles tipped with small circles. Off, off the front, these are the optical tentacles. Again, there's a tiny circle at the end there. And then these ones down here are the sensory tentacles, and these act as both sort of uh, the sense of touch and the sense of smell. And then the only other thing to draw is the foot fringe. So it glides along on this foot, and you've probably seen that slugs and snails leave trails of slime. And there's some chemicals in there that sort of uh, numb the tongues of any predators that try to eat the banana slug. I've actually done that on a dare. I don't do this at home, but if you lick a banana slug, it'll numb your tongue. Uh, so it trails along on a slime trail. The slime, in addition to being a defense mechanism, helps keep the, uh, the slug from drying out. And it usually is active at night, and it likes cool, moist places, like temperate rainforests. All right, so there's the basics of the banana slug. Uh, they have spot patterns on the back, and the spots are usually about as big as the pneumostome. So when I draw in with my darker pencil, I'm going to draw in some spots. And there's no one way to do it. You can draw a bunch of different spots. You probably all know each other by their spots. Okay, and then there's the foot fringe. It goes along the bottom. If you want to draw a slime trail coming off the back, you can smear it out there. A little textured edge of the foot fringe. And another thing that you can't see in this banana slug is that it's got some mouth parts, little grinding mouth parts called a radula that it grinds up its food with. And it plays an important role in the temperate rainforest as a decomposer. So as it eats, it leaves castings or poop uh, that are really rich in nutrients and act as fertilizer. So there you go. 
the Pacific Banana Slug. Uh, now you know. I. Thanks for watching Burke's uh, Drawing Wild Washington. Until next time, don't forget, drawing starts with seeing and thinking. So practice seeing the shapes within the shapes of these animals, thinking about how they go together, and there's really nothing you can't draw. All right, have fun. What's that? You want more? Well, why didn't you say so? We've got coloring book pages available for each one of the ecosystems we've done a program on. And we've got the entire mural available as a silk screened poster for purchase on the website. So check out the links and get yourself some more ecosystem art. Bye.